Hello everyone. Today I'd like to talk about cognitive dissonance in the mind of the Bernie bot, um, the Bernie Sanders supporter. And why do I call them Bernie bots? Um, not as a pejorative so much. Um, I draw parallels between them and the supporters of Ron Paul in 2012, the Paul bot. Um, in 2012 you would have thought that Ron Paul was going to be the winner of the presidential election if you got all of your information from the internet. Um, it, it even seemed like he was the only candidate for presidency sometimes and he didn't win, um, didn't come close and I see the same thing with Bernie Sanders. Um, a lot of parallels I draw be between the two candidacies and I've taken a look at some of the videos that I've made in the past months about the political landscape this year and I think I'm not so much at odds with Bernie Sanders's positions on things as I am the irrational hopes and dreams that I see coming out of Bernie Sanders supporters and part of this is probably because of my close relationship as a delegate in 2012 to Paul bots because I was a spoiler in the Republican Party, but I met a lot of true believers in Ron Paul, and uh, I had to work with them. And yeah, uh, I just don't like seeing people's hopes and dreams crushed like I saw, and I saw a lot of denial on their part of things that were blatantly obvious, and. Yeah, I don't like it. See, I, I don't like seeing it happen again. You know, I just it bugs me um, when I see all of this cognitive dissonance when people are setting themselves up for all of that frustration and sadness when they don't win in the end. And so, I want to talk about two uh, big cognitive dissonances that I've seen this week, and one of which is. I get comments on my videos saying that I'm a troll, I'm just trying to take the wind out of the sails of the Bernie supporters and, and whatnot, because Bernie Sanders is going to not drop out, uh, and Bernie Sanders is not going to uh, see Hillary Clinton clinch before California, and Bernie Sanders is going to force that brokered convention, and he's going to get more uh, democratically elected delegates, and, and he's going to make a statement, and then afterwards... If and when he doesn't win the Democratic Party uh, nomination for presidency, he's going to start his third party campaign. And then, you know, we're going to all support him then because Bernie or bust, right? Well, problem the, the problem with that is if Bernie wanted to start a third party campaign, um, I mean, the writing is on the wall right now. He could just drop out right now and say, well, it was rigged. I, I, there was no way I could win in the Democratic Party anyway, but since I've I've now made my message there, I'm going to start my third party candidacy and uh, make a good run at this. He could do that right now, right? But instead, uh, Bernie supporters don't want him to drop out right now. They want him to uh, make that statement at the DNC. So go through all of the, the primaries and then wait till July for that actual party to try to force that brokerage convention and then start a president presidential campaign as a third party candidate with like four or five months in order to uh, really get the word out and, and really impress people that he could actually win versus six or seven months right I think he'd have a better chance at winning with more time to campaign as a third party candidate than waiting till the last minute to leave the Democratic Party and then start that campaign. But, you know, what do you want? Do you want him to run third party, or do you want him to stick it out? You know, to see how things would actually play out if he stays in the Democratic Party. Cognitive dissonance. You know, you, you got two things that you're, you're putting value on. What do you want? Um, so the second thing that I've, I've noticed, um, that kind of 
it, it's been true uh, up until yesterday, okay? Uh, so as of yesterday, things changed, and some of my Bernie supporting friends don't want to see this point. But it has been uh, a talking point among Bernie Sanders supporters that the closed primary is disenfranchising a whole bunch of independent voters, and that's where Bernie's base is, the independents who didn't affiliate with the Democratic Party before Bernie decided to, you know, after 30 years of not being a Democrat, be a Democrat instead of an independent. So a lot of people who didn't meet the deadline of registering to be a Democrat can't help out Bernie if it if it's a closed primary where independents aren't allowed to vote for the Democratic Party nominee. Well, as of yesterday, when Ted Cruz bowed out of the Republican Party's race, that wisdom is no longer true. That it's better for Bernie to run in a open primary than a closed primary. And here's why, okay? The first part of this is that Bernie bots have had one talking point that they have told to every person on the fucking planet, um, even people all the way in Abu Dhabi know this, unless you're living under a rock, in a cave, behind a vault door on another fucking planet, you have heard from a Bernie bot that Bernie Sanders polls better against any Republican than Hillary Clinton does. Right? Everyone knows this. It's ingrained in everyone's fucking head. Because the Bernie bots kept echoing it all over the place. Well, now that Cruz, ugh, now that Cruz is uh, out of the Republican primary, Trump is the nominee, period. De facto. Going to happen. Um, there is no way to force a brokered convention in the Republican Party anymore, so there's no chance, no, not even a small chance, that Trump is not going to be their nominee. So, what are all the former Cruz supporters who are in the upcoming primary states going to do? And what are all the Trump supporters going to do? See, the Cruz supporters didn't want to vote for Trump anyway, so they were possible spoiler votes who might have jumped over to the other party to uh, vote. Now, Trump supporters have no reason to support their candidate either because they know he's going to win. There's no one else pretty much running against him. Kasich? <laughs> you know. So what are they going to do to have more of a voice in the political process? Well, they want to be spoilers, but... In most of the states that are coming up, uh, Bernie Sanders is protected from that spoiling because those states have closed primaries. Uh, and, and why are they going to vote for Hillary Clinton as spoilers instead of Bernie Sanders? Because Bernie Sanders polls better against any Republican than Hillary Clinton. That's why they're going to vote for Hillary Clinton. So, um, Bernie Sanders lucks out, actually, in the rest of the states that he doesn't have to face that spoiling in most of those states. Um, Nebraska has a closed primary. Oregon has a closed primary. Washington has a closed primary. California has a cl closed primary. New Jersey has a closed primary. Well, it's mixed. Uh, so is uh, West Virginia. It's mixed. New Mexico has a closed primary. South Dakota has a closed primary. And that's it, right? The only primary that you're really going to see this effect of these spoilers is Montana. And I'm like two or three weeks out from uh, Montana's primary, right? It's June 7th. Four weeks. I'm going to make this prediction a month out right now, that you're going to see in Montana's primary, Hillary Clinton, in an open primary, do better than she would have if Cruz had not dropped out. All right? The fact that the Republican Party has decided its nominee is going to make so many people want to be spoiler in order to try to help their party win 
in the end. And that's something that uh, now works towards Bernie's advantage that all of the rest of the contests are closed because they weren't going to be voting for him. He's the one that they'd have more trouble against. So let that sit and crawl around in your noggin a little bit. Um, one of the predictions that I did not make would be would have been uh, Cruz dropping out in the first place. Um, when I saw him name a running mate in Carly Fiorina, I thought he was going to stick it out and, and try to force that brokered convention because, you know, who names a running mate and then one week later drops out of the fucking race? You know, Carly Fiorina took her fucking six years to run Hewlett-Packard's name into the ground and make sure that we don't buy Hewlett-Packard computers anymore. Took her six or seven days to ruin Ted Cruz's campaign. <laughs> wow. Um, but yeah, on June 7th, uh, right before you hear California's results, pay attention to Montana and see what happens when there's no one left to to vote for in one side, and then they just try to spoil the other uh, the other election, the other party's election. That's that's what's going to happen, and you know, count your your blessings that the rest of those primaries are closed, Bernie bots, because you you want a showing, right? You know, now that you know that he's not going to win, you you you, can, you feel that sinking in. You still want to see, you know, a, a good presence. Well, it would have looked a lot worse. Those numbers would have been a lot more skewed if those were open primaries coming up. 